This is Texans TV. Texans Extra Points is sponsored by BHP and by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, and by your Houston area Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. We are ready to rock in Houston. Touchdown, Houston! Are you kidding? What a catch! Oh, that's a baby! Hello there and welcome into Texans Extra Points. We're so very happy that you're with us. My name's Drew Doherty. I'm your host and we've got my good pal John Harris. You're the radio sideline reporter. You're a team analyst. We've got some things to talk about, some bad, some good. We're going to try and get to the bottom of it all. You ready to do this? Let's do this. Let's go. Yeah, the Texans fall Saturday night, 24 to 9. Actually, Thursday night. We'll, we'll do that over again. It's Thursday night, friends. 24 to 9 to the Carolina Panthers. And it was a tough one, but we're going to get more into that and we will break down what happened on the offense, what happened on the defense and special teams. We've got some players of the game, but we're going to get to the bottom of it all. What caused this loss and how they can get better. But we start with some quick hits and we begin by talking, well, about the cause of the loss. David Culley, head coach of the Texans, was very forthright about what happened and what went wrong Thursday night against the Panthers. Well, we didn't, obviously, we didn't run the ball very well. Um, and we have to be able to do that. Uh, I think uh, the team we played had a little bit to do with that also. That's a very good defensive football team. Uh, you know, they kind of knew that, you know, with a new quarterback in, that things are going to be a little bit different than what they had seen previously in the first two ball games, of, of game and a half anyway. And, uh, you know, I just got to look at the video just to see exactly what happened. It was the first start of Davis Mills' career in the NFL. He had played in the regular season a little bit last week. He started the second half in Cleveland, and he played a lot in the preseason. But this was the first regular season action for the rookie. I always think back on that quote, it's never as bad as you think it was, and it's never as good as you think it was. Um, there were obviously a couple plays I'd like back, um, but I'm going to come in tomorrow, watch the film, and see what we can improve on, but also see what we did well to move forward. So those were Davis Mills' thoughts on how he played, but what about his teammates on both sides of the ball? They had some complimentary things to say about the rookie. Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, he came out first start, prime time. He handled himself well, you know, uh, just like us all. You know, we just got to continue to just get on the same page. Um, you know, and get that chemistry going between us all. But at the end of the day, you know, very proud of how he came out. There's no moral victory, so unfortunately we didn't get the win. At times on Thursday night, the defense did some nice things, but ultimately when you lose by 15, they say they just didn't do quite enough. Thankfully, we got about 10 days off for this one uh, until our next game, so it's going to be in a, a taste in our mouth that we don't want to get, uh, we want to get out of. So 24 hours, man, we're going to get, watch this away, watch the film tomorrow, get better, and get back to the drawing board, and, um, Hey, it's football, man. You win some, you lose some. I mean, it just went, didn't go our way, and we just you got to take it and roll with it. All right, so those are some uh, post-game thoughts by the coaches and players. And ultimately, on Thursday night, this offense was just limited in a lot of different ways. They only get 193 yards in total. What did you see? What was the problem? And, and what did you think of it all? Well, I thought Davis, in the two-minute drill, the last drive of the first half, yeah. I go back to, a, there was a point in training camp where Davis stepped in with the ones and did a two-minute drill, and it looked beautiful. I mean, it was awesome. I remember turning to you, talking to Mark, thinking, well, I kind of like that. Maybe they should that do more of that. Offense, yeah. Right? Coach Culley addressed that in the press conference and said, look, I don't think we're at a point where we can do that beyond the end of the first half or the end of the half. That was a pretty good drive. And I think what it did is Davis just took the play, read the defense, threw the ball. And I think that helps a rookie. It just speeds up the thought process. It speeds up the execution process. process and I think it helped a rookie. And he, at that point, found number 13. And Brandon Cooks is a guy that he can definitely rely on. But the run game just didn't help them out. Yeah, the running backs this season, they're when the running backs run the ball, not, you know, Davis Mills or right. Tyrod Taylor or on an end around from a wide receiver. When the running backs are running the ball, they're getting less than three yards per right. carry. In the last two weeks, they've only got about two and a half yards per right. carry, and, and that's not sustainable. 
especially after everything we've heard all offseason, all preseason about how the Texans are committed to running the ball. I do think this offensive line is better, but right now they just don't really have a chance, these running backs, like you're talking about, when, when things happen. Because you noticed what Chin was doing the week before and the week before that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Against Cleveland, you, you had safeties sitting there at 12, 13 yards, and as soon as they read run, they just took off. And they played flat-footed. Basically, in playing flat-footed is they're not going backwards. Right. They're going forward. As soon as they got a run read, they took off. And that allowed a guy like Grant Delpit for the Browns to make a tackle for a loss from 12, 13 yards deep. So it's part of what's coming to the NFL. It's, I mean, it's already here, but it's, we're seeing it more and more. And, and that is safeties are going to sit there at about 12, 13 yards. And they're now taught, look, as soon as you read run, go. If they decide to throw it over our heads, we're going to try and scramble back and get coverage there. But you're going to take off and go. You're going to eliminate this run game. We're going to show the fact that we have maybe less in the box to block, but that safety is going to be a guy you don't account for. And that happened on that run against the Browns last week. Uh, I can't remember who the running back was, but everybody's blocked. But Delpit comes up and makes a tackle. So Chin is a really tough guy to go against, and it doesn't get much easier with the Bills coming up. You know, I, I want to get more into what Davis Mills can do better and what uh, you liked aside from the two-minute drill. But before that, we got to go, go and do a telestrator. John was talking about the touchdown pass, the lone one of the night for Davis Mills. He found Anthony Miller, and here's how it happened. Welcome to Texas Telestrator presented by BMW. I'm your host, John Harris. And we're going to take a look at, I thought, Maybe the most well-constructed goal line play I've seen the Texans run in, in quite some time, and it generated the touchdown against the Carolina Panthers. So let's go to our surface presented by Microsoft, and you'll see the ball at about the two-yard line right there. And the Texans come out in empty. Now, one of the things that a lot of teams do is they'll start a back out here, and then to get sort of a read on coverage, They'll start him here, and then they'll line him up right there. So that's what, at first glance, it appears the Texans are doing with David Johnson, that he's coming into the backfield, and he's going to line up next to Davis Mills, and then maybe work something with Brandon Cooks over on this side of the field. So you can tell the angle he starts on, and then all of a sudden, he stops and goes. And this is brilliant, because now all of a sudden, you see panic over here. They're not exactly sure what they should be doing and how to match up. And you'll see exactly what the motion creates. Motion, especially down on the goal line, and fast motion is an excellent technique. So watch David come across in motion. And the thought is, rub route there, pick all these guys off. David shoots to the flat. Davis has got an easy throw, and it's touchdown city. But watch what happens to David when he goes across. First of all, Shaq Thompson bumps, so they're bumping Jermaine Carter. But these two guys both see David Johnson. Watch what happens. David Johnson covered by three guys. The motion caught all of their attention and caught them off guard. That leaves Anthony Miller to the end zone wide open. And what I love about this is a rookie quarterback, and he makes the read. He looks, and he knows there are a lot of dudes over here. Sometimes it's that simple. There are a lot of dudes covering the guy I was going to throw to. That was number one option. Where's my number two option? And there's Anthony Miller. I'm going to throw a laser. Now, one other thing to look at here, and I think this is, this is excellent stuff here. Panthers only bring four. But because this throw is presumably going to go to the flat, this guy can be a problem. Watch Marcus Cannon cut him down cut him. Now, you do that to get his hands down so you can make a direct throw. Miami Tutsil does it on the other side, and it's beautiful. They both get him down so they can make those throws that they need to, but in this case, they found a lane. Anthony Miller, touchdown. And let's take a look at it from here, from behind. You'll see it. Motion, pulls everybody, caught watching, jumps on that, and there's Miller right there, going to be a touchdown. Excellent play concept. Need more of that down inside the five-yard line for the rest of this season.
Darnold under center, fakes the handoff, and he's under pressure. The ball comes out. There's a fight for it. The Texans say they have it. No, the Carolina Panthers have it. Welcome back. That was Jonathan Grenard. Good to see him back. He hadn't made it out to the first two games. He'd been inactive, but uh, a strip sack there. Good evening for Grenard. Good to have him back. He's somebody that you think is ascending in the NFL and uh, played nicely. He was one of the few bright spots in a 24-9 loss. Drew Doherty, John Harris, wrapping things up on the Texans' uh, defeat at the hands of the Carolina Panthers Thursday night football. And let's talk about the pass defense woes. How do you fix that? Because... Sam Darnold was able to kind of dice you up over the middle of the field. I mean, it's tough. You you talk about a guy like DJ Moore. I think he's one of the more underrated, really good athletic young receivers in this league. And you really just don't have anybody to match up with him. You're without Terrence Mitchell. Justin Reed's not playing in the game. So you're down a couple of very important pieces in the secondary. Look, when it comes to playing playing the pass, Rush and coverage got to work together. And there were moments where the rush and coverage were Especially brilliant. in the second quarter, yes. especially late. I mean, the, the strip huge. sacks, two in a row, you get another sack as well. I mean, Absolutely The huge. strip sacks, that's what Lovey Smith wants. I mean, yeah. every defensive coordinator wants that. But Lovey Smith is specific about it. He's like, sacks are nice, but I want you to get the ball. Yeah. I want the ball to come loose. And they did it twice, just didn't come back to him. And the, I think, to me, the biggest play of the game, the biggest play of the game, it was seven to six. You punted them the ball. They've got it inside the ten yard line. You stopped them on first down. I think it was second down, and they got to still come out of their own end. And Darnold goes back to pass, and Jacob Martin beats his guy off the edge. I think he was looping inside actually. And they've got Darnold dead to rights, but they don't finish the sack. Yeah. And Darnold is able to squirt out. It's probably I don't know 15, 20 yard run, whatever it was. And the attack on the late hit of 15. All of a sudden, the dam broke at that point. If you sack him, it's third and long. Even though the Panthers did get some third and longs, yep. even the third and long, sometimes they didn't convert. They got them to fourth and ones, which allowed, which allowed them to go for it. That was a killer. That was an absolute killer because you still had a little bit of the momentum, even though you didn't do anything with the drive before at the, at the start the half. If you get the sack, it's third and long. Now, they're feeling like, man, they've sacked us on each of the last two, three drop. Man, holy smokes. Now maybe they do something, throw a screen just to get out of their ends, or whatever. But that was a big play they weren't able to make. Missed opportunities, yeah, dooms you in every yep. single game. That was one of the missed opportunities on Thursday night. All right, we got to take a break, but before we do, we've got some Texans trivia for you. Chris Brown, the kicker for the Texans, is the all-time scoring leader in franchise history. He's got 767 career points. Name two of the other guys in the top five. We'll have that answer later on in the show. First and goal inside the two. Mills in the gun, throws over the middle, back to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Anthony Miller. All right, first touchdown as a Texan for Anthony Miller. Catches that one just before the half, and it gets the Texans back in the ball game. He had four yards of separation on that play. It's according to the next-gen stats if you're into that type cool. of thing. This is uh, Texans Extra Points. I'm Drew Doherty. This is John Harris. And, John, this is uh, where we kind of focus on some of the bright spots that we saw on the evening. Brandon Cooks, that guy's not screwing around. He's, I, I think he's the most underrated receiver in yep. the league. I mean, he just cranks out 1,000-yard seasons. He's leading the NFL as of Thursday night in receiving yards on the year. Now, that might change after the games sure. get through on Sunday. Nonetheless, he's still playing very, very well. And he is a reliable target for Davis Mills, for Tyrod Taylor, for whoever's throwing the ball to him. I really like what I've seen from him. What's the value, though, that he brings off the field or away from the play when it comes to Cooks? Well, I, I, defenses have got to start taking him away at some point. I mean, everybody, the brother seems to know that he's going to get the football. But the way that he works, uh, we talk to him each and every Monday on Texas Monday on our radio program and, and just – Talking to him about the little things, he takes such pride in doing those little things and being a leader for you know a lot of young guys in that in that receiving room, even guys that are vets. He feels like he's setting the tone for, and he definitely uh, has done that. And my my uh, my heart just dropped 
when he catches that one across the middle and then the safety went to go down and, and hit him as he's on the ground and stuck a knee right in his rib cage. Yeah, yeah, that didn't look good. Oh, yeah. but, uh, but he, he popped just, up and kept catching passes. I mean, his speed puts everybody on blast. I yeah. mean, his speed is, is still at a high level, but just the way he runs his routes, how physical he needs to be, if that's what the game calls for. Um, at some point during the broadcast, I, I just said to Mark and Andre, I don't know if it's on there or off the air, I said, if I'm Davis Mills and I'm getting heat all over the place, I'm just looking for 13. I'm throwing the ball. That's all. I'm just going to do that. Throw it to 13. I got a chance to have that completed. And he kind of started, he kinda started to do that later yeah. on in the, in the second half. I yep. mean, he did take that tact and take that route as far as getting the ball to Cooks. It's not a bad plan. Yeah. The, the problem was he was not able to get the ball to – too many other folks. Uh, you have Aikens and Miller each catch four passes. That's nice. But then after that, Burkhead and Ingram are the only other two that catch right. passes on the night. Don't hit a tight end really after, aside from Aikens, when you got Farrell Brown there. It was tough. It was tough for Mills. What else does he need to do to, to work on to get better at? Who's that, Davis Mills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the one thing with Davis is just finding that comfort level a lot earlier than he did. Uh, I think he was very acutely aware of the fact that he didn't want to make a mistake. He did not want to throw an interception. I got a feeling that was kind of pounded into his head, and, and for good reason. You don't want to see your, your quarterback throwing interceptions, giving the ball to the other team. You know, he took that hit from Grant Delpit, um, and he had thrown the interception earlier. Yeah. So I think his ball security was, that was forefront. Like, I'm not going to take a massive risk. He's going to find that happy median, and that is between kind of how he started the Browns game and this game. When he got in a groove, there were times he looked really good. Mm -hmm. There were times he got he looked really, really good. Then he didn't, like I said, he didn't turn the ball over. So you can live with that. But you get locked in on Brandon Cooks. That's got to, you know, hey, throw it to the open guy. Yeah, when you get a crunch time, throw it to Brandon Cooks. But sure. get a little bit more comfortable back there. Get through reads, scan a little bit quicker, and you'll be okay. All right, players of the game. This is normally where we go players to watch, but we're going to go players of the game. I'm going to go with Cooks. Uh, no big surprise there. Nine catches, 112 yards. He was targeted 11 times. He came up with it nine of those times. That's yeah. pretty darn good. We've talked at length about Cooks. So who's your player of the game? I think I'm going to go with John Grenard. That's a good one. Didn't play in the first two games. Still kind of recovering from that injury he suffered up in Green Bay. Got him back, and you could see the he's impact. He's active, man. He's, he started the game. I thought he played well on the edge. I mean, that pass rush was just wicked mm -hmm. coming off the edge. And then he went and got the ball. And you just the thing about stripping the ball out is, that thing is, it's not a basketball. It doesn't make a true bounce. So as soon as you knock it out, there's no telling where that ball is going to go, and you got an opportunity. It so happened that Matt Paradis, your center, fell on it. You fall on it right there. You get the ball in great field position. Who knows what you can do stealing seven points there off the strip sack. But I, I'm going to give it to John Grenard. I think the best is certainly ahead of him for sure. No doubt. All right. And the best is ahead of us because we've still got more Texans extra points. So please stick with us because we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Texans Extra Points has been sponsored by BHP and by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans. Earlier in the program, we asked you, could you name two other Texans in franchise history that are in the top five in scoring? And we gave you one of them. Chris Brown is the all-time leader. So who else is there? Well, if you said any combo of Kaini Fairbairn, Arian Foster, Ooh. Andre Johnson, and DeAndre Hopkins. Well, you get two of them, you win. And uh, right now, you win some claps from us. Sorry, we'll get a prize or something, and, and we'll make it awesome. But uh, this is Texans Extra Points. I'm Drew Doherty with my good pal, John Harris. We're doing this from the Ford Studios, and we have so much fun when we do it. So it's time now with a long weekend and a full week to get ready for Buffalo. Ooh, that'll be a tough one. Tough trip, but you've got some extra time. You've seen some things. You can kind of cater the game plan uh, accordingly to what you've seen and liked. What are, what are two of your Ticketmaster keys to the week ahead? Not to the game against the Bills, but from now until you leave for the game. Find what ails your run game. I think that's the biggest thing. Find what ails your run game. Defensively, you know, there, was, there were a lot of good moments and there were, there were so many just almost 
And I just wonder if getting some guys healthy, i.e. Justin Reed, Kamu Grugier Hill, is the best thing that happens to that defense over, over that time frame. But you got to find what ails that run game and start thinking of ways to, to fix it and get it back where you think it should be. Yeah, and you bring up the health. That's not one of your keys, but it's – that's the obvious key that uh, that we go with. You got to get these guys healthy. Yeah. Terrence Mitchell, you missed him. He oh. was basically your cornerback, your yes. top cornerback. He did not play on Thursday night. And then Tyrod Taylor will get closer and closer. He's not going to play at Buffalo, but right. let's heal that hamstring up quickly because he, you saw how important he was. You saw through through the first three halves of football how good he yep. looked. And hey. This thing probably looks, as far as the season goes, looks a lot differently if Tyrod Taylor is healthy and Tyrod Taylor is playing because he puts different stresses on the defense than does Davis Mills, and he knows more. You're going you're gonna to run into yeah. that with a decade's worth of experience, right? Yeah, no doubt. And I don't want to take away anything from Davis Mills. No, He's been no, thrown into no. a pretty tough situation, and yet he put up a made field goal in Cleveland. He puts up 10 points and a half. He had them within three points. Mm -hmm. And tonight it's 7-6. to six. He's making some throws. And they just can't get over the top. They can't make that one play to kind of put them over the top and make the Panthers chase them instead of having to chase the Panthers all night. Yeah, Texans were very conservative with how they used Mills. Nonetheless, he still completed 66% of his yeah. passes, which he hadn't done all preseason. He didn't do that yeah. at Cleveland. That that's something, you know, to tip your hat on or tip your hat to and feel good about. He had also had the touchdown, no interception. All right, we will be back next week for Texans Extra Points. We'll be getting you set for the Bills game, which is up in Buffalo. You going to go to uh, Niagara Falls, have a good time up there? Maybe. Maybe. All right. I just want to see a win. I do, too. We hope you see a win as well, and we can't wait to do this again for you and with you here on Texans Extra Points. Don't you move a muscle. Have fun. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.